Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in this video we continue our look at the Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics with an in-depth study of one of the creepiest of all, the puppets. Previously in this series we have analysed Chica, Foxy, Bonnie and Freddy as well as their variants, so remember to check out those videos if you are interested. Now over the course of the next 4 or 5 episodes in this series, we will dive deeper into the mythology and take a look at some of the less famous but nonetheless important members of Scott Cawthon's sprawling cast of creeps. So let's kick off this episode with a complete history of the puppet. The puppet, also known as the marinette, is not exactly your everyday Pinocchio. It is instead a terrifying looking entity which wouldn't look too out of place in a killer clown movie or Tim Burton's Beetlejuice. The puppet's face looks like a mask, with an uncomfortably large toothless smile, sporting bright red lipstick, and above this smile a pair of black lifeless eyes can be found. Purple stripes which look like streams of tears are seen below these eyes, and either side sit rosy red cheeks. The body is extremely slender and tall. It is black with white stripes on the arms and legs and buttons running up the torso. The puppet only has three fingers to each hand, and these are almost like cables rather than functioning digits. They seem to have no joints within. Even stranger still are the feet, or rather the lack of them. The puppet almost seems to float as it steps forward on a pair of pin points. It is without doubt the most humanoid of all animatronics. But what is the story behind this creepy creation? Originally the puppet was an inanimate object. It wasn't able to greet guests like Freddy and the rest of the gang, but rather could be found at the prize counter in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. We are told it was originally created as a security measure to keep the children visiting the pizzeria safe. Yeah, that didn't work out so great, did it? You see, this all changed one fateful night. Henry Emily was co-creator of the Fazbear animatronics and the work partner of nefarious mastermind William Afton. He had a daughter called Charlotte who ended up becoming the first victim of his murderous co-worker. As with much of the Five Nights at Freddy's lore, the exact details are vague, but it seems after Charlotte was murdered by Afton, her spirit became trapped inside the puppet's shell. You see, Henry had given a green bracelet to his daughter, allowing the puppet to track Charlie and protect her. However, the puppet became trapped and so was unable to intervene in William Afton's crime. By the time the puppet reaches Charlotte's body, it's too late. Its circuits have been damaged by the rainfall, and so it simply crawls over to her corpse, where Charlotte's spirit then possessed it. In the insanity ending of FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator, we can hear her father Henry monologuing as he burns the restaurant and animatronics trapped within to the ground. Here he condemns Afton's spirit to hell, freeing the spirits of the other lost children and apologising to his daughter for being unable to save her. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms the way you lifted others into yours. However, there is more to the puppet than Charlotte Emily. You see, after she was murdered and went on to possess this empty vessel, Charlie then went on to witness William Afton go on to abduct and murder the other missing children. It has been theorised in fact that it was the puppet who stuffed the children into the animatronic suits, as a way to allow them to exact revenge and live on after death in the same way Charlotte did. We get the sense that this puppet is very protective over the spirits of the other children, as we hear the following lines spoken by her during Ultimate Custom Night. The others are under my protection. We also get the sense that the puppet enjoys tormenting its victims and seeing them suffer, as if the spirit of Charlotte has become twisted and vengeful over the years as a result of her tragic end. Seeing you powerless is like music to me. 
You may have noticed I have been referring to the puppet as a she, due to the fact we know the soul within is female. Despite this, the puppet itself is actually male, a fact confirmed officially within the book The Freddy Files. As well as this, the puppet's mechanic description in Ultimate Custom Night also uses the male pronoun. So we've discussed the puppet's looks and backstory in the game, but what about actual game appearances and forms it has taken over the years? The puppet first appeared in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, where it would attack if the player did not keep the music box wound over at the prize counter. The music emanating from this box is the children's nursery rhyme, My Grandfather's Clock, which sounds like this. However, fail to keep this box wound up, and the appropriately titled Pop Goes the Weasel plays instead. After this, the puppet emerges from the box and will begin stalking the player, making its way camera to camera until it reaches the security office. Unlike most of the animatronics, it sees right through our Freddy mask disguise and cannot be deterred by the flashlight, meaning failure to keep the music box wound results in an instant death if the puppet reaches us before the shifts end. The next time we saw the puppet was in Five Nights at Freddy's 3. As with the other animatronics, in this particular game the puppet takes on a phantom form. Its appearance is now decayed and burnt. It appears in the hallway on camera 8, and if we look at it for too long, the puppet moves into our office where its head obscures our view and makes protecting ourselves a much harder task. It's also incredibly creepy. However, the puppet does have another role in this game. By double clicking on the drawing of a puppet found on Cam 2, we are transported to a secret 8 bit style minigame called Happiest Day. Here, we actually control the puppet in a cryptic 2D side scroller. This minigame leads us to the game's good ending when all other minigames have been successfully completed. It once again shows the puppet looking over the children protectively as it seems to symbolise their souls leaving their bodies. Moving over to FNAF 4 and the puppet is nowhere to be seen. Well, until the arrival of the Halloween update that is. This introduced a horrifying variant of the puppet known as Knight Marion. If you thought the original puppet design was creepy, get a load of this guy. Its body is even thinner, with skeletal details such as a protruding ribcage and legs made from pure bone. Knight Marion's upper limbs end at the elbow, and the rest of the arm is replaced by long stripy tendrils. Its face now lacks the rosy cheeks and red lipstick. This is replaced by a mouth filled with pointy teeth, and two much bigger eyes which glow a bright white at their centre. Throughout our experience with Knight Marion, that eerie music box melody can be heard. Knight Marion also appeared in FNAF Help Wanted, where its presence in VR was genuinely terrifying. In Ultimate Custom Knight, we get to hear Knight Marion speak, and it seems to confirm the character's cruel and sadistic nature. The puppet's final appearance was in FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator, where it appeared during a series of minigames telling the tragic backstory of Charlotte Emily as previously mentioned. However, it should also be noted that we are shown evidence of how the puppet had been fused within the Freddy animatronic Lefty. It can be seen clearly here in this image. Hence why we hear Henry talking to his daughter during the game's true ending. So in that sense, Lefty's attacks in FNAF 6 sort of double as those of the puppet 2, although it does not appear in its true form during gameplay. With all that said, we have now reached the end of today's video and this look at the history of the puppet across the Five Nights at Freddy's series. I hope you did enjoy this video and if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more horror related content. 
Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.